Bonjour. Welcome to our exciting journey in Marseille, France. Today we invite you to join us on a captivating three-hour electric bike tour through the charming streets and iconic landmarks of this beautiful country. We had an exhilarating adventure through the breathtaking landscapes of Calanque National Park. Our small group of six getting ready to embrace the off-road biking experience. As you watch the video, I'll demonstrate the steepness of the hills by showing you video in both sped up and normal speed. This will give you a clear idea of the challenging terrain we encountered during the tour. We booked our cross-country e-bike tour of Marseille Calanx through Viator. Our tour guide did a fabulous job and I'll leave a link in the description below. We traverse small paths and off-road trails that wind their way to the Kalong. So we stop here for a minute because uh, we are technically already in the in the national park uh, de Calanc. Uh, but do you know where the Calanc is? No, nope. buddy. Okay, a Calanc is. Uh, you're gonna see. It's, uh, we have limestone here all over the place, and limestone is very fragile. A lot of cracks in it, and at some point the water starts digging, and after a hundred thousands of years, it makes a huge cove. Okay, that's what you're gonna see today, and that cove is called a Calanc. All right. Uh, so the, this place here is the. Um, and that's not like the Calon, because we have 26 Calons, 26 codes before uh, between Marseille and the next city over, I see. And you cannot go on the seaside to the next city over on the car. You have to go back inland. If you go on the seaside, it's only by foot or not even by bike, but by bike, you could do it, but not on the seaside. Okay. So it's a, it's a dead end road. Marseille is a dead end road over there. And, uh, and this, what's uh, particular about this place, we are right now in a city park that was given to the city by Lily Pastre, we're going to talk to her about her a little later. And she gave this in 1973 when she died. She had uh, uh, 240 acres right here. Uh, she used to live in the city and come here on the weekends or for the holidays. In 1973, when she died, she gave this to the city saying that the only condition that it remains a public park forever. So now we have a public park that used to be privately owned. And what's uh, special about it is that it's a regular city park with water fountains, playgrounds with kids, ice cream parlors and all that stuff. Except as you go towards the south, it will become the national park with no boundaries. So you start as an organized park, and then it becomes the wilderness right from, oh, you can start it from, right from here. They made their fortune uh, doing a, a business with uh, Egypt. So they had a, a counter in Egypt, and they brought cereals and fabrics uh, back in the uh, late 1700s, early 1800s. They made a fortune. In 1810, they bought this place, and they built a castle, uh, or like a mansion, that we're going to go see now. Okay, in Marseille frequently experiences excessive rainwater runoff due to dense industrial and urban landscape. To address this issue, various drainage systems are employed, and this is just one of them. Okay, so here we're standing in front of the uh, the main house of uh, this uh, park. Uh, there were three of those that were built. This is the biggest one. 
The other one's a little smaller for the uh, rest of the family. Uh, built in 1862, uh, we can notice already that the, the red bricks, which is quite unusual in Marseille, usually we have white stone like the, what's around the windows here. That's the stone we usually use. But uh, the red bricks probably uh, a will of from the, the family to stand out from the rest of the crowd, like to look different. Also, the architecture is quite complex. You see those relief on the on the facade here, the way the windows are. It's like flat and round kind of uh, design, quite unusual. Uh, the the main floor right here was uh, 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 made to party. So they had like 150, 200 people. It's uh, huge rooms, and they just came to have big parties on weekends and uh, uh, in the summertime. Uh, this place became famous because uh, when Lily Pastré, that woman I told you about, came here in the 1920s, uh, she, she decided to spend her, her time and fortune uh, helping other people. So, for example, during the war, a lot of Jewish people came here to hide in a house, and then we take like boats to uh, uh, North Africa or South America. Another Jewish kids came here to hide as well. Uh, she was a friend of Edith Piaf. Edith Piaf is a famous uh, French singer. And uh, at the time, they were friends, so she asked her if she could also uh, host some of her friends, Jewish, uh, that were, uh, the, the Gestapo was looking for them, and they came here to hide as well. Uh, in 1943, she gave out here Midsummer Night Dream from Shakespeare on this, uh, on this land here. We had, there was 50 uh, uh, musicians and actors on stage, and what year were 300 people uh, from the Crème de la Crème de Marseille watching that show. So uh, Shakespeare was English, enemy of the Germans, so not supposed to be played on the territory, but she did it anyway. Uh, so a bit of a rebel and somebody uh, uh, that uh, cared about much about arts and uh, the artists in general. Uh, after the war, she uh, helped out like Taradsky. Taradsky was a, a famous uh, pianist, Hungarian pianist. Uh, she came here, she had uh, a brain tumor and nearly paid for the surgeon to come from Paris. Uh, to do the surgery, she started the uh, uh, classical film fest, um, music, uh, classical music festival of Aix-en-Provence. That's the next city over. It's a famous festival today, and it's still going on. And uh, she also gave a piece of a property to the uh, a Goodwill store. There are homeless people working there, and they resell stuff that we bring, so they can make uh, a living with that. And she gave uh, two acres for them to uh, put their uh, their house over there, and they're still there today. So the war. After 73, it was empty for like uh, 20 years. Uh, it became a ceramic museum for a while, but then that didn't go too well because, as you notice, there's no parking lot to bring the car here, so you have to walk at least five minutes, and that is a problem. So it went down, and it removed the, uh, the uh, exhibition to another park, and uh, now it's been empty since then, unfortunately. And they are talking about opening up a residency for artists. Uh, the memory of that lady, uh, but that's next year. And next year is a favorite word in Marseille. So whenever you want something, it's going to happen next year. <laughs> just have to wait a little bit by that. And, by happening. Yeah. and like I said, so here you have the, the product probably uh, st stops right here. When the, when the, uh, the forest starts, it's the national park. Okay. So it starts right there. So as you notice, no boundaries. You can, uh, uh, buy a couple of ice cream cones and then you can jog for, uh, 10 hours to uh, burn out the calories you know, without seeing a car or traffic lights going toward the next city over. is an off-road adventure like no other, where you can soak in the natural beauty of the Kalank National Park and is a true haven for outdoor enthusiasts.
So this is a privately owned uh, Calanque. Calanque is this cove, huh? All the land here and all the houses, you have the 20 houses and, uh, and the main house in the center, it belongs to one, one person. And that was, uh, they bought this, uh, the cop a couple bought this in uh, 1885 at an auction. Uh, and then they gave it as a uh, wedding gift to the daughter. There was a wedding gift to the groom. Uh, he was a count. And uh, so they gave this to, to the daughter and to the count. And she became a countess. And uh, they didn't used to live here. They used to just uh, live in the city and come here again for the weekend. And uh, the main house is called the castle today. It's not a castle. It's a, it's a restaurant. But, it, I mean, it doesn't look like a castle. It's a big house. And they call it the castle because all the other houses are little shacks for, from fishermen. And uh, she didn't want the fishermen to be thrown out one day. So she signed a uh, hundred year leases to everybody. So today, whoever is here is are the descendants of those fishermen. It's a very close, close circle. You have no Airbnb. You cannot rent. You cannot buy. It's just the private circle. If to go in there, you have to be from the family or a very, very close friend and, and they have to all accept you. So, but, and they have to let us go. With the property, because in France there's a law that says we don't we, all the um, four meters to the to the sea belong to the people, the whole coastline. So we have no private beaches here. We have no private land that goes to the beach. Even if your property goes to the beach, the four meters that left, people can walk through, and you cannot uh, you cannot stop them from going there.
Tom and I unleashed our inner explorer, witnessed the striking beauty of limestone cliffs against the Mediterranean Sea, and created unforgettable memories in the heart of southern France. We glided through the picturesque landscapes, feeling the fresh sea breeze against our faces, and witnessing the awe-inspiring scenery of steep limestone cliffs rising majestically from the crystal clear waters of the Mediterranean Sea. So, much. so here we're still in the 8th uh, district of Marseille. We have 16th district together. The city is pretty quite far over there, but all this is Marseille, okay? All we're going to do today is in Marseille. The park belongs to Marseille. We have 12 national parks in France, and it's the only urban park. One million people living here, and in less than 15 minutes, usually from where you are in the city, you can have access to this park. Meaning, in 15 minutes, this is where you are. Like, you know, nobody, it's a, it's a national park, so there are no constructions, no cars, no road, nothing. And you can uh, take your bike for five or six hours, and uh, it's a beautiful playground, uh, knowing that you have a city with one million people living right next to you.
Anyways, uh, sitting in front of uh, the uh, famous French jail, uh, Les Beaumet. It's a famous jail in France because it's unlike Paris, famous people right here. And Marseille is known to be a gangster city, so it's a very well used uh, jail. Uh, it does still 2,200 inmates uh, right now inside. Uh, this used to be the women entrance, but now they, they modernized it, making it. And uh, new buildings in Santa, you will see going down. And, uh, so this is not in use anymore. Uh, if you've seen the movie, uh, The French Connection, you will see that door uh, in that movie. It was shot in front of that door. Uh, going down, we can't see them to, uh, today because the trees are already really much here, but on the walls here and up there, what we have uh on the wall, sculptures. Uh, this says lust, and this says... Uh, Vanity. Does that vanity and lust? Does that remind you of anything? It's the seven deadly sins. No. So as we're going down on the wall, you will see the other five. As our exhilarating e-bike tour comes to an end, we reflect on the incredible experiences and unforgettable memories we created together. From the rugged landscapes of the Calanc National Park to the charming streets of Marseille, our journey has been nothing short of extraordinary. Throughout this adventure, we've pedaled through picturesque countryside and witnessed the beauty of the Calanc National Park and immersed ourselves in the rich history that breathes life into every street. But above all, it's the connections we've made and the camaraderie we shared that have truly made this tour special. We've laughed, we've conquered the challenging hills, and we've embraced the spirit of adventure together. Thank you so much for joining us on this remarkable e-bike tour. Stay tuned for more travel content, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, happy exploring! <laughs>